as a pet or a companion, I'm going to get a bongo. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I got. I got a couple of them. So, uh, uh, George, I appreciate we've been at this for a little over an hour already, but, um, well, cool. We got some stuff done. I oh, like yeah. It. Oh, no doubt. I enjoy doing this. I always enjoy doing this, uh, Benito. And anytime you want to talk, uh, if I'm not too busy, uh, I'm always up for it. This, this is what I do. No, I'd, uh, I'd much appreciate it. And, and I'd, I still want to come up to, uh, to Oregon and, and do some of these interviews in person. Um, I, I want to come to, I want to come visit you guys in Mexico when you're settled down there. Well, we, uh, we leave next Friday. We bought a, um, we bought a little uh, Ford Transit van, and um, we're, it's cool. just, it was you know the cost of bringing in the dogs and the cat and and then also us and airlines and stuff. It was just it was it turned out to be just about the same to buy this little truck. Um, I just I went to it had a bare floor in it, and I picked out a you, color. You want a vehicle in Mexico anyway? Yeah, no, I, I definitely. Have a vehicle in Mexico. Yeah, so I'm hoping this one uh, goes. But um, I went to pick a color, and I picked a color for the inside of the van because it had this bare wood floor, and oh, um, and I was trying. You know, I, I wanted. You know, I'm not. Aura's got a, it. We're not doing tie dye. We're not doing psychedelia. But uh, I picked up a color, and it turned out I want that color. It turned out it was called Purple Haze. So <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Perfect. You know, I just. Uh, you know, so, but I am going to do some stuff on the inside. It's going to be fun. I'll send you a picture. It won't look like the bus. It's white on the outside. You're buying a place down there. Is that correct? Yeah, we found, um, right near Nancy and where Nancy and Richie moved into, there was uh, a drug cartel had a hotel as a front. And, is that, um, is that in Z. Watt, yes. That's what I thought. And, uh, so thought. this drug cartel had this hotel. And one of the drug dealers built right behind it. He was in on buying the whole, um, a, a guy from Oregon had, uh, was part of the whole cartel. He ended up getting busted. Well, the whole thing got busted. Somebody, and so the hotel went sort of whatever my, legit might be. Um, and his property sat for about 12 years and that's the property that we bought. Um, that, so you're close to the beach then. That's a beach town. Yeah. We're about, um, we're about 500 yards from the beach, maybe at the most. Oh, hey. Just out of the tsunami zone. Yeah, and um, and you know, if you, life on the beach, life at Nancy's house is okay, but the wind and the waves never stop. You know, <laughs> it sounds great, but it could be, especially uh, when the wind goes southwest in the afternoon, and it just blows and blows all day. It, it can be a little disorienting. So, um, so we yeah, have some I, some protection. I've never been to see what now is that what? Down in the Gulf of Tawarapak, where the wind blows like hell through there. Well, it's um, it's a little, it has a little cove. I mean, it's uh, it's north of Acapulco, and it has a little uh, bay, sort of like Acapulco does. But it um, okay. never had the development that Acapulco had. And it it, 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 its little sister city is Ixtapa. In '68, uh -huh. that's when uh, in, in 1968, the Mexican government set up two tourist zones one of them was in Ixtapa and one of them was in um, Cancun and so um, you know there's gambling there and that's you know Americans go there but north of it north of Zihuatanejo where we are I mean we're moving to a town that has about a hundred people in it which oh, how, yeah, how far from Zihuatanejo is it it's about 45 minute drive Oh, okay, that's not bad. And most of it is just getting down the road to the town. It's 20 minutes on the highway, and then from the highway to the town is another 20 minutes, and that's sort of a bumpy road. It used to be all dirt, even until recent I, times. I'm very familiar with dirt roads. I, I drove uh, probably 10,000 miles of dirt roads when I was in Mexico. Yeah, it was, you know, and it's, but, you know, I, what I wonder, you know, and I'm soon to find out is, you know, 10,000 years of civilization and there are only a hundred people there, you know, there's gotta be a reason, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's heavenly. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, you're disconnected from stuff, but it's just, it's great. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful there. Yeah, well, I know. So, uh, yeah, you're welcome to come, uh, what, the, the drug dealer had built this hacienda style house with a center courtyard and he started construction on this other thing 
but it never finished. So we we have this hacienda style house that has sort of sat empty for a long time. So we, we have a lot of work. It's a fixer upper. But we also have the shell, it looks like Beirut, of this other um, dwelling. So we're going to try and make that sort of a guest room or if the time comes, we can rent out it our house and go live in there. It doesn't down there. It doesn't get cold, uh, but just very rarely. Uh, if it's got a roof, that's about all you need. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it does rain for three months of the year, so that's yeah, I know that, that. that's something we'll have to uh, – we'll see how we cope with that. But, um, you know, that, but those three months are, are in the northern hemisphere is the time to travel. You know, that's the time yeah. to go, uh, right. you know, get out and do stuff in the summer hours. So. But, but I remember we, we were in Manzanillo, which is a considerable distance north of there, a few hundred miles. But uh, I remember that about oh, late in the summer, it started turning into hurricane season. And the seas got big. We had lightning storms every single afternoon. Thunder and lightning and the rain like hell in the evening and afternoon and evening, uh, every day. Uh, it was just wild. Uh, when we first went down, it was in the spring, you know, it was just beautiful and sunny and then the summer got hot and then in the later summer, it really got wild, uh, the hurricane season. We had one offshore hurricane that the, the waves were crashing on the beach 15 feet high and stuff and it was wild there then. And then, uh, then we left shortly after that. But I, but my thinking, when we were in Puerto Vallarta, when Neil and I went to Puerto Vallarta the following year, uh, we were there in the winter. We went down in January and stayed, late January and stayed until late March when it was getting pretty hot. And then we went to the mountains. We went to San Miguel de Allende. Mm-hmm. And, and it was great there in the spring. And, and I've been there in the summer and it was just, it was wonderful. It was, Hot, but not too hot, and cool at night, and uh, it, it wasn't that sweltering, humid heat that the beach was in the, in the uh, summertime and late summer. I think that's what Ora and I are planning on doing: is traveling yeah. in those in in the wet months. You'll, you'll find it gets real hot there and real humid in the summertime, especially late summer. Right. Well, I'm, we went down in uh, we went down in September, and it was <laughs> it hurt to wear clothes. But, oh yeah, yeah. That that was when it was wild in September. We we were. Uh, did you see thunderstorms and stuff like that all the time? We actually were there for a week, and we got we got off easy. I mean, there was a couple. Um, there was you know there was one night you know, but it wasn't anything you know because we were coming from our wind. Our, our weather has changed on the east end of Long Island too. Like you have the heat yeah. waves when it uh, rains here now. It rains like it does in the tropics. So, you know, we had, you know, so we got, we were, when we were there, we had a, you know, we had what was sort of become our normal rains here. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it was, um, you know, there was lightning and, uh, you know, the animals were all disturbed and everything, but it wasn't much different than what we've been having here. Which is, you know, again, that's back to, you know, why is it 115 in, uh, in, in Eugene? Yeah, exactly. So it's, uh, but you know, we, uh, so we had a taste of it, but it wasn't, uh, and I'd also, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd spent part of my youth in Miami. So I was sort of used to, uh, to hurricanes and afternoon storms and, um, and the rest of me is Cuban. So, you know, the, 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 it being so hot, you can't wear clothes is like, you know, it's something genetic in me is like, yeah, okay, this is fine. You know? Yeah. I remember by the time that was, Late summer, it was so hot in Manzanillo that uh, I slept naked with no covers, with a big fan blowing on me all night long. To just be cool enough to sleep. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, that's the yeah. that we have. We, we're going to have fans in every room. We're also going to yeah. have air conditioning, but we're going to try and yeah. see if we can get by with fans and and yeah, get well, get that can. way. That yeah. was one of the things that I brought back with me when I when I came up here and got a a truck and a bunch of instruments. I bought a couple of air conditioners too. Yeah. I got an air conditioner in the house and one in the room that we were doing all of our music practice in. Yeah, it can get wicked. Oh yeah, it was brutal. So, all right, well, I'll be in touch and uh, we'll send pictures. Stay in touch and uh, I hope you uh, have great success on your trip to Mexico. All right, thanks. I'll be in touch. Okay, give give the rest of your family my love. Will do. Thanks, George. Bye-bye.